so we tell a lot of stories in the elementary program. We tell stories in the cultural curriculum, in history, in geography, and so on. But we also like to tell stories in language and math as well. So this is one of the favorite stories that we tell for math. And it really relates mathematics with geometry. And what I love is that we have children in upper elementary who still love to take these binomial and trinomial cubes off the shelves and just attempt to put them together as a puzzle and see what they remember. And what's really fun is when you have new friends who haven't been in Montessori before, uh, to have a, um, an older child demonstrate for them how it works. And they don't always remember, so it's fun to see it happen and sometimes they come to us for help. So we're going to tell you a story tonight and Amanda has agreed to be my student. <laughs> I'm going well, to tell I the story sure. too. It's been a long time since I've had this story. Yes, yeah. not sure I remember Mrs. Malcolm. <coughs> and this is the story <laughs> of the three kings and I love this story. So I have to get my, my notes here, my cheat sheet. So, as all good stories do, this one begins with Once Upon a Time. So, once upon a time, there were three kings, and they were each the founder of their own kingdom, and these kingdoms were very closely allied together and formed an empire. Now, each of these kings had his own size and his own color. And whenever there was a special occasion, they all marched in procession with all their attendants. The Red King, being the largest, okay, thank you, good, I can take it. Being the largest, went first with his six attendants who dressed in his colors front to back. Thank you. And out of these six, three were related to the Blue King, and three were related to the yellow king. And then the next king, the blue king, followed with his six attendants who were dressed in the color of their king, front to back. And out of these six, three were related to the red king and three were related to the yellow king. And then came the yellow king, the smallest of all, and he's dressed all in yellow, and he has his six attendants dressed all in his color front to back. And out of those six, three are related to the Red King, and three are related to the Blue King. There were also six bodyguards, and each king had two of those bodyguards. And the bodyguards are dressed all in black because that's what bodyguards do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, whenever they went out, they marched in just this way in a beautiful procession, and there was a great deal of order and harmony in this uh, empire. Well, one day, the Blue King got to feeling a little stuck in the middle and wasn't really sure he liked being stuck in the middle. He thought he deserved better because he actually was the first to assume power and to start the dynasty. And he was quite unlike the Yellow King who was small and very modest. And the Yellow King, he was the one that gave birth to them all, but he really hated to make a show. So the Blue King started a revolt. He sent three of his attendants to capture the attendants of the Red King. You want to? Okay. I, go, go ahead. So they are captured. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, there was a struggle. All of the bodyguards rushed from the other kings and surrounded the blue king. <laughs> Can I get my hand down? They're on, they're on horse and galloping. Okay. <laughs> All right. Three of the attendants of the yellow king moved up 
and surrounded the remaining attendants of the Blue King. The other three attendants moved forward as support and the Yellow King moved to the rear just to keep an eye on everything. And so the procession continued in just this way. The Red King was so mighty he hardly knew what was going on and he went on unperturbed. He didn't even know there'd been a revolt. The Blue King had to move on. He's completely surrounded now. He has no choice in his same place. He's not very happy about it, but he does. And the Yellow King is bringing up the rear, walking in his quiet, modest way, very content, because he never liked the show anyway. Well, why did this happen? What caused this change of order? Well, unknown to them, they had left their own kingdoms and had entered the kingdom of the decimal system and their values had changed. The Red King had become the cube of hundreds, the Blue King, the cube of tens, and the Yellow King, the cube of units. And so they all lived happily ever after. So that's our story. And it's really just the beginning of a study that we get into with them that really can get very involved depending on the interest and skill level of our students. So I wanted to pass out to you guys and thank you. Okay. So this is the algebraic <coughs> version of what we just looked at here. And the next step will be for us. Oh, sorry. Am I pausing? I'll pause. No, we were just going to get one for the um, oh. video. Oh, for the camera? I hope there aren't no. I guess there are. Oh, look, he's got it. <laughs> okay. So one of the next steps with this, if children want to pursue it, would be to begin to look at the value of each of these figures that you see here. So when we talk about 100 cubed, this is what we look at. And we give it the value of A. So this is A cubed here. And we would probably just put this on top of it so that they could see very clearly that it's cubed. And they've done a lot of work with squares and cubes leading up to this. Our students love working with binomial squares, trinomial squares, polynomial squares, and so this is kind of a very natural transition. In fact, bring this out here. Just looking at the cover of the box, they're already familiar with what they see here because we've done a lot of work with these squares. And so for them, it's just a, a you know, natural progression to move <coughs> into this. So we would give values to each of these. So like these would all be, um, and we have three of these, so it would be 3A squared B because it's um, one side of A and it's one side of B. There we go. So um, each of these would get a value. Once we've done that, and we kind of come, can come up with a chart even of this with them, then we'll look at this cube, which is a little different. It's still a trinomial cube, but it's called the algebraic trinomial cube. And you notice that it has different colors. And what's really cool about this is when they lay it out, they see like gradations of colors from the white to the yellow to the orange to the red. And so this is another one that they enjoy working with. And so it's not only a puzzle anymore, although it's still a fun puzzle for them, but for those who've come all the way through from beginnings and primary, this is where they begin to kind of bring it all together and to really grasp what it is 
that they've been working with all this time. And, and it's also what I love about the Pink Tower because um, I haven't done this in a long time, but now I'm looking at it, I have to do it this year. Sometimes when we do measurement, we'll go and borrow the Pink Tower from a primary class and we'll actually measure each cube of the Pink Tower. And they are blown away when they realize that that smallest cube is a one centimeter cube and the biggest cube is a 10 centimeter cube with everything in between. And they just think that's the coolest thing. So it's, you know, a lot of fun. And I, my only regret is that I didn't learn this when I was a kid. Yeah. So that's all I have to say. Do you have anything to add? Yeah. Okay. Bye.